Now, if you feel like you are constantly spinning your wheels, if you're always falling behind with your to-do list and in this mad scramble, like this mad dash to try and catch up, that's all about to change. Let's go. Hi guys, it's Laura and I help you live a simpler, happier, more spacious life. And if you find that you are always putting off starting a task, then this first tip is for you because it's going to help you get moving. It is resetting your space because have you ever avoided a task or even a hobby, you know, something that you want to do because the space is messy. You don't want to craft because your craft supplies are all disorganized. You know, your crafting desk is in a bit of a mess. You don't know where anything is. You don't want to cook because the pots and pans are still dirty from the night before. I do this all the time because really it's not just one task you have to do. It is multiple. It's at least two because first you have to clean up. Suddenly your seemingly simple and straightforward task becomes this monster stress thing that you have to overcome. Resetting your space, on the other hand, means getting into this mindset that a task or activity is not actually finished until you have tidied up afterwards. So dinner is not completed until you have actually dealt with the dirty dishes. Getting into the habit of putting things back when you're done with them and just tidying as you go is going to make a big difference to how easy it is to get started the next time you want to sit down to do a task. And it's important to note that it's not about having a completely clear service. You don't have to wipe everything off your counters or off your desk or anything like that. It's simply so that the next time you sit down to do a task, you can easily pick up where you left off. Next up is another great way to get started on something and it's probably the productivity tip that I get the most comments on every time I mention it. It's the one that people say that has transformed their life the most. Set timers for everything. Now, timers are not only great in the kind of race against the clock mentality, but they're also wonderful in another way and that is letting your brain know that a break is definitely coming. When you are slogging away at something and you don't know when you will next be able to take a step back, you start mentally switching off. You start daydreaming, you start watching the clock, counting down the minutes, and invariably the clock starts moving backwards. You start thinking about checking your phone. It's just much easier for you to be distracted. You don't know when your next break is, so you start almost creating one for yourself. Whereas when you know for sure that you have a break coming up, and not only that, but that you will be alerted immediately as soon as that break time arrives, then it's much easier for your brain to focus on the task at hand. You won't have to keep checking the time. You won't have to wonder if you've done enough work yet to kind of like justify a break. You can just sit down and stick to it until the timer goes off. Honestly, that might be the biggest benefit to timers for me, but yes, it does also help with that race against the clock mentality, you know, getting something done before a deadline. You know that saying that a task will expand to fill the time that you have for it. And I think we've probably all experienced that in our own lives. You know, maybe you have a project that you're working on and the deadline is like way in the future. It's the same with like New Year's resolutions. You know, if you don't have to do something until December, until 12 months from now or 11 months from now, the chances of you actually getting started now are so much slimmer because it seems like you have such a long time to do it. It doesn't feel at all pressing. Now, obviously I'm not suggesting that you use timers to kind of constantly create this false sense of a deadline to constantly put yourself under pressure to get something done, but timers can be great to help you not only stay on task, to stay on track, but to get something done faster than you might otherwise do it. And they're also great for just just getting started on a task if you are feeling that resistance setting a timer for just like one or two minutes can help you overcome that starting hurdle so that you can build up some momentum next up is a big one if you find that your days seem to kind of run away with you and before you know it another week has come and gone and you feel like you have nothing major nothing significant to show for it front load your days and weeks. In other words, tackle a big task or your more priority tasks early on. You want to get it out of the way as early as you can because 
things crop up, <laughs> you know, life happens and as the days and weeks go on, unexpected things can happen, distractions can take you off course and before you know it, you're falling further and further behind on your to-do list. I know for me, I start the week full of energy and full of motivation, but if I don't get the tough stuff done on a Monday or kind of as early in the week as I can, then as the week goes on, I'm going to start falling further and further behind because of distractions, because of interruptions, because of those unexpected things that crop up. And I'm inevitably going to start pushing off the things that were towards the end of my to-do list to the following week and they may not ever get done. Okay, and particularly for those with chronic illness or chronic pain, you know that you're not in the same kind of rhythm as everyone else. You will have low days and then you will have days where you have a little bit more energy and motivation. As soon as you start to feel that coming back, those are the times that you should tackle those priority tasks. Not to run yourself into the ground or anything or use up all of your energy as quickly as you can, but simply to make sure that when you do have the attention and the energy and the capability that you can tackle the tasks that are most important to you. Here's another tip I feel is great for everyone regardless of your schedule or routine. It is prepping and packing in advance. Mornings are the foundation of your day. Now your morning doesn't have to be actual earthly morning. It could just be like the early stages of whenever your day starts or the early stages of you starting to feel better and go through a healthier or high energy phase. You want to make that time as effortless as possible and that could mean having your outfits picked out already, having your lunch prepped and packed and knowing what you're going to have for breakfast. It could be setting your coffee machine on a timer. It could be having your bag, you know, whether that be for school or work or whatever, already packed with everything you need. Even having a to-do list written so that you know exactly what you can tackle as soon as you are ready to go. And similarly, if you find that you get sidetracked by notifications or emails or something like that, then put a plan in place. Like tell yourself you're not going to check your phone or your devices until you have done these other things until you've had your breakfast, until you've started on another like high priority task or something like that. Give yourself a rule so that you won't be distracted in that early phase because it's so important. It really sets the tone for everything that comes thereafter. It's taking as much friction out of that early phase as possible so that you can hit the ground running. And again, really important if you do find that you have low energy days, you can use those days to prep and plan for your high energy ones. I'm sure this next one is going to sound counterintuitive, but you know I'm right. You need to prioritize sleep and recharging. Now, notice I didn't say relaxation because I have found that sometimes activities that I do that I think are relaxing, like maybe sitting down and watching some TV or something, I don't feel re-energized afterwards. In fact, I feel even more sleepy, more tired than I did previously. And the reason is those activities are not actually recharging my batteries in any way. Sometimes we think of relaxation as sitting down or lying down or just slouching and generally being a couch potato. <laughs> but there are some activities that we do that are, you know, that require some physical or mental energy, but that are actually recharging us and rejuvenating us. That's really important to remember, but I do have a sneaky little hack to help you prolong your energy levels. Now, take this with like a bit of a grain of salt because even the Energizer Bunny needs a break. But the best trick I have learned to keep my energy levels as high as possible is to alternate activity types. So if I am doing a very physical activity, then I will switch thereafter to an activity that is more mentally demanding. It's a little bit simplistic, but generally you have two different types of batteries. One is your body battery. It is your physical battery, the one that gets depleted as you are physically engaged in movement. And then the other battery is more of a brain battery. It's the one that requires a lot of mental and emotional energy and focus. It's about finding the balance between the two. So let's say you've spent the morning running around doing errands and you are slowly draining your body battery, your physical battery, 
but you may then be able to spend an afternoon engaged in some mentally intensive work. You don't necessarily need to take a complete break. Even if after running your errands, you feel exhausted, it's probably just physical exhaustion. Now, if you do need a break, if you are feeling physically and mentally drained, take a complete break, let both of your batteries recharge. Kind of a side note, but I've really tried hard this year to change my mindset around my relationship to uh, my body and its health. Because here's what I used to believe, and honestly, sometimes still do, like I said, I'm still working on changing that mindset, but I used to believe that I was relying on my body to keep me going. Whereas in actual fact, I realize now that it's me uh, who has to keep my body going. Like my body relies on me, if that makes sense. Instead of expecting my body to do the work for me and to keep me going, I have to do the work for my body. I have to prioritize sleep and all of those recharging activities. My body is my vehicle. Like the more I take care of it, the more I maintain it, the better fuel I put into it, the longer it's going to last. I have to really take care of it and give it plenty of pit stops along the way if I want it to run smoothly and to take me on this long road trip through life. Following on from that then, so like I mentioned, you have to fuel your body. It's funny because I recently looked back on my journal entries from last year, this time last year, and I was horrified by how terrible my diet was. And at the time, I thought it was good. You know, I thought I was doing the right things. But looking back now with kind of the extra education that I have and the extra experience that I have, I realized that no, I was doing myself a huge disservice. But one thing that stood out to me from those entries was how often I talked about how tired I was, you know, how run down I felt, how sometimes I had to take a nap in the middle of the day and not just as a lovely little activity for myself, but as a, like, I actually have to sleep because I cannot function anymore. I was talking about how unhealthy I was, you know, the pain and discomfort that I was feeling on a very regular basis, like a day daily basis. Fast forward a little bit with the extra knowledge I have gained and using that to fuel my body in a better way, there has been a marked improvement in my overall health, my overall energy levels. And I do want to make the point that it's not about depriving yourself because something I've come to realize is that yes, you have to fuel your body, but sometimes you have to fuel your soul too. And that means eating the foods that give you pleasure. Even making small changes here and there can make a big difference. Same goes for making sure that you are properly hydrated. <laughs> making sure that your body is properly fueled and can work in the way that it's supposed to. I am definitely not saying that food alone can completely heal you, but I do think that it can get you a long way. But none of this is going to matter if you are working hard on the wrong things. Nobody wants to be busy just for the sake of it. You don't want to be spinning your wheels but actually getting nowhere. Watch this video next if you're ready to live life on easy mode while still having a big impact. Until then, Gaurav, Mila Mahagwev. I'll get Svekki Mishif Shikalua. Sláon!